Today, I'd like to talk to you about quiet linear bearings. What are linear bearings? Well, they're the bearings that have the built-in balls in it that runs along a hardened steel shaft. It can be a rectangle or a circular shaft. And as the bearing moves along, the balls roll. A bit like a tank tread or a um, bulldozer track the way they just keep moving along. So they're very popular in CNC, especially in 3D printers. Now one of the big problems with them that people have in their house when you have a 3D printer is you may have the machine in the corner of the room and it's printing away and it prints for a long time and it's quite noisy. It can start to annoy you after a while. So, just how noisy are they? Well, we'll just switch this on. And this is a 8mm linear bearing. And that was maxing out at 77 decibels. Now, let us see what it is normally. That's 40 decibels. So what makes the noise? Well this is what the round bearings look like and you may be able to see the little balls in there. But it's metal on metal. Any metal on metal will make a noise. The more lubrication you have in between the less noise. So basically it's the noise from metal on metal. Then the next thing is, if you know a stringed instrument, a guitar or violin, anything that has a stretched string and is mounted in two points, the bottom becomes a sounding board. So that comes louder than perhaps that. So that can be annoying. And the other thing too, is you can have other uses for it and just say you're making your own slider. This will be mounted that way, two bearings, one on the rear, but I'll just show you this way. So you switch your video camera on. Who wants to listen to that noise each time? you make a move. So you need to eliminate that. Another problem too, especially if you buy off eBay, where quality is not our concern, it might be an 8mm rod, but it has tolerance on it. The more expensive the finer tolerance. So these rods may be smaller in diameter, and the bearing inside might be larger, so that gives you slop. Why is that a problem? Look at how much I can lift that up and down. That's on gravity dropping it down. And that translates to slop in here. It's moving maybe one and a half millimetre left to right. So what does that mean? That means if you have two parallel shafts up, you have one plate on the top, and you have one drive line, one cable belt pulling that. When it pulls this direction, it will kink that way. Then when the belt goes to pull that way, it will kink that way. 
so it's going like that and that helps bind can lock it in so instead of being a smooth slide it's then harder and you can feel the balls grating so that's another problem so how can we eliminate that and as our friends at CNC 4A like to tell you all the time how can we take you to the next level and as always for a cheaper price well that's to add replacement bushings these are these plastic bushings now becoming very popular for the 3D printers good points bad points they won't last as long with a heavy weight as the steel ones but they are much quieter how much quieter? I'm glad you asked put this on again put it so you can see it around the 52 mark so just for a comparison which one would you like to listen to for four six hours or if you're printing overnight so how do we go about replacing them well the bearings are housed in the are pushed in the housing they're a slight sliding fit very neat there's no burrs on it, it'll slide in so that just pushes in then there's a circlip in the groove either end holding it in to remove it you need a set of circlip pliers the type to squeeze because it's an internal circlip you have to squeeze it in to get it out for this type which are popular aren't they good because as you can see the two pins don't go close enough together so when you're trying to get them out it will almost take it out and, it will, and the circlip will snap up on the angle and, and cause all sorts of problems so if you do have this type make sure you have the bent pin type that will touch or we'll go for the old fashioned plier type which the ends are a little bit too big for the hole they fit in but when you push it in and you go to open up because it's tapered they do snap out but you pull one out then you just put, get your finger and push the bearing out it will start to grab where that groove and that groove line up and just pull it out and you just push the other bearing back in but when you buy your bearings even though these are all standard these bearings are not I bought 8 millimeter bearings and the OD of these is 15 millimeter 8 millimeter bore so that's a 15 millimeter hole these were 16 millimeters 15.8 5 eighths of an inch so I had to machine off almost a millimeter now when plastic is molded or any casting is molded it's tapered that's to get it out of the die or the casting when they take the, the master mold the pattern out so even though this may be eight millimeter this internal and external have got a taper on it when i went to machine them up i as these photos will show they've got an expensive set of expanding collets 
that are totally useless. The design cocks the pulls on the fingers but cocks it up on the side, so it's no good. So I had to turn up the spigot to fit the bush. And when I was checking it with the drill in the end, it was tapered and had a lip on that side. So I made it to fit just over the bush, over the drill. Turn, it, turn that spigot down. But because you can see there's got the slits in it, it tended to release itself. So you might push it once with the, the blunting of the drill and it won't go in, then it'll pop in, then you take it off and you put it back in and it expanded on you. So these are quite flexible. And originally I thought you might push the one millimetre in interference fit, but that's way too much. Plus when the ID was 0.1 of a millimetre over, so it was eight, uh, yeah, 8 one mil. So even if you pushed it down one millimetre, you wouldn't be able to get the shaft on. So I had to turn them down. Uh, luckily I got eight to do so, they, they were machined quite well. And they are quite flexible. So I then made them maybe one thou interference fit. Well, that, one's, uh, that one fits in okay. That's how easy they go in and how easy they go out. Again, you'll find these got a slight taper on them as well. So I've taken the circlips out both ends. Why you may ask? With these, they last long, no problem. If you don't mind the noise and the problem with the angles, as you can see here with this one, that's got less of a movement than what that has got. But even to reduce it even more, and plus, when it's going backwards and forwards, I'll start to wear. So I have removed the circlips because I'm going to drill and tap M3, 1 8 on that side and that side and I've left the circlips out so as I can take the burrs off to put grub screws in. So that way when I put the the bush in as you can see they when I push the bush in as it wears because it'll wear up the top because that's where all the weight is I can then just get the grub screw and push against the bush and because it's got all the slits in it it will deform and it will tighten up so if I get too much play in it say so I said well that's too sloppy I then can just nip up the grub screw and that will then get the stop out and make the twisting eliminated the noise will be quiet and I'll have a lot better type of bush and if they end up like that I can then just rotate them 90 degrees and tighten them up that way so that's how CNC 4A takes you to the next level but not only showing how to do it why to do it but how by doing it it's a big improvement so now the neighbours won't know if I'm 3D printing. The wildlife won't be spooked when I'm taking stack photos or slider work. These are quite cheap. And for the supported rods that have that as part of the bottom of it, you can use you can you use those bearings. What you have to do is slit it so as it makes the same shape as these with the slot in them. Drill and tap your holes on the side 
So as you've got a screw on that side and a screw on that side and it pushes in that to make them tight and take the slop out. So quite versatile. Those bushes are dearer than what a steel bush is, <laughs> just the way things are. But if you want to do some nice quiet filming, some nice quiet printing, I highly recommend buying a set. And as always, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.